You guys ever get tired of carrying that big old SCBA tank all the way to the paintball shop and back, spending time away from your family? Well, I did too. So we're going to go through my shop and see how we get it done here at the Aragon Advisor. Welcome back, fellow air gunners, to another edition of the Air Gun Advisor. I'm here today to talk about compressors. Not any old compressors, not your home compressor, but a high pressure compressor. All right. You know, one of the great things about PCP rifles is the fact that they are very consistent, they are very quiet, and they're a joy to shoot. But the bad side of these things is that they take a lot of air, and not just any regular old air, but high pressure air, and you want to make sure that air is dry. So you're not having condensation build up within the, the gun itself. Um, you know, one thing that I found as I've been working with these is the far, car, carbon fiber tanks. Um, you get a high shot count from and can alleviate some of the issues. Uh, and also the guns becoming more and more efficient, like this Brokock Bantam. I think I get uh, close to 70 or 80 shots without, you know, going off and the curve, bell curve going straight down. So I get a lot of output from this, but as I've been testing more rifles and doing more reviews of rifles, I was spending one and a half hours to two hours every week heading out to the paintball shop to get my tank filled. And that just was not going to be adequate, taking too much time away from my family and hanging out with my friends. And it just didn't, wasn't something I wanted to do. So I came up with a solution. And that solution was to find a shoebox compressor used and go ahead and install that in my shop. And that's what I did. But I was still leery of the water issue. So you know, really this video is not just about the shoebox compressor, but also how do you alleviate some of that water so you don't have it building up in your tank or in your gun. So without further ado, Air Gunners, let's go ahead and head out to my shop and I'll share with you my solution to this issue. All right, welcome to my shop. Here you have the Craftsman 150 PSI uh, home compressor or shop compressor, I should say. And then you'll notice behind it, and that you saw in that little call out up there, I have the compressor, off the head of the compressor, I have it running to an automobile AC condenser. And I have that attached with just some copper wire that I found I wanted to make sure, or before I used that copper wire, I also made sure that, the, that it was rated for at least 150 PSI, and that it was going to be able to withstand the pressure coming off the head of the compressor. So what happens here is that the hot air, and I mean hot, you don't even want to touch those copper wire or copper tubing coming off there, goes up and into the AC uh, condenser unit. It then cools, and as it cools, water, the water condenses and forms droplets. And those droplets go down, and as they go down, we have more copper tubing than I did. I left the loops in there, just help it cool down even further. And then all that water collects in this inline water separator that I picked up from Sears Hardware. And it's really kind of impressive to see how much water is in there. Uh, and to think all of that was originally going into my tank. And so it's gonna help my tank last a little longer too and prevent more water from going into my SCBA tank that I use for air guns. We have the tank here regulated at 100 PSI and then running from the tank all the way up and around, and we'll see it uh, entering the shoebox compressor here. Notice my wife is a uh, avid gardener. She likes her hydrangeas up there at the top, drying those out for during the winter season. And there it is, a shoebox compressor. I also added another inline water separator Right before the shoebox compressor, I have yet to see any actual water droplets in there. Uh, I haven't had to empty it at all, so I think that's just a little bit overkill, but it's there just in case. It'll be interesting to see how that uh, affects things during the summer months when it gets a little bit hotter, a little more humid, uh, and see if that changes anything. So, who knows? Time will tell. At any rate, we have also at the very end on the high output side of the shoebox compressor an alpha filter that I picked up from Joe Broncato. It's been working very well. You also see the knob down there I just pointed out 
that is the knob to release the pressure because about 2,000 PSI stays inside of that little alpha filter there when you're all said and done. It also allows you to drain any water that has collected at the bottom of that filter. That's also why they have it in the vertical position there. So overall, I've been pretty pleased with this setup. Um, and this is this right here is going to show you why. So how much water is in the alpha filter after we're all said and done? Well, I decided to do a little cardboard test. As you know, cardboard shows water very well. And we're going to release some air pressure. Sorry, can't hold the camera and do it at the same time. Look at that. Very little, if any, water. Hey, welcome back, guys. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the shop. It's nothing fancy, I know, but at least you get an opportunity to see what I'm dealing with or working with here on the Airgun Advisor. Uh, I want to send a quick shout out to Joe Broncato of AirTanksForSale.com for helping me out with a 5% discount on that alpha filter. And it's a great little filter if that's what you're, uh, or if you're looking for something along those lines. Also, I want you guys to keep an eye out for a couple of reviews I'll have coming up here uh, once the weather warms up. One will be with this Brocock Bantam that I picked up when the sale was going on just before or right after Thanksgiving. This one happened to come from Baker Air Guns. And then also a Marauder Field and Target. That is the uh, regulated version. Uh, both of these reviews will be of the 177 caliber. It happens to be a caliber that I shoot a lot. So keep an eye open for those. And until next time, May your pellets fly straight and your trigger pull stay smooth. And we'll see you right here next time for another edition of the Airgun Advisor. Hey, just a quick reminder. If you like these kind of videos, you want more content from the Airgun Advisor, or if you have any suggestions for us, make sure you leave those in the comments below. Also, before you leave, make sure you click that thumbs up button and you hit subscribe because that lets us know you like what you're seeing. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time right here on the Airgun Advisor.